Jakob Inger Britton has had a mixed Olympic Games, once again losing out on the 1500m gold in a championship race and finishing 4th place after a surprise win by Cole Hocker. However, just like the last two world championships, he avenged his loss by a dominant victory in the 5000m and once again the other athletes played right into his hands. Today we're going to analyse how Inger Britton won the 5000m and look at the context of the race and its competitors along with a breakdown of Jakob's race tactics. The first thing that should be addressed is that the circumstances leading up to the 5000m final were very ideal for Inga Britson. For one, there had previously been a hard fought 10000m final where Joshua Cheptegei had won a very fast race, which saw 13 men break the previous Olympic record. Joshua Cheptegei himself finished in 26 minutes 43 seconds. Now many of the top athletes in that race were supposed to race in the 5k, which means their legs would have been tired from that 10000m performance. Of course this means that it's possible they wouldn't have been able to perform at their best during the 5000m final. In fact, two of the top 5 fastest races on the start list by personal best were in the 10,000m, including 10,000m silver medalist Grant Fisher. What was even more favourable for Inga Britton is the fact that many of the top contenders for the 5k had either pulled out of the race or not been selected for the race. Both Joshua Cheptegei and Jakob Kiplimo had pulled out of the race due to not recovering well from the gruelling 10,000m race last week. Joshua Cheptegei is of course the 5 and 10k world record holder. He was also the defending Olympic champion in the 5000 meters before this race. And whilst his form had been questioned somewhat going into the Olympic Games by people like myself, he'd proven everyone wrong by a pretty dominant performance in the 10,000 meters. Jakob Kibalima, whilst he didn't do as well in the 10k race, and maybe wasn't a serious contender for the 5k podium, is still the half marathon world record holder, and would have been able to work well with Cheptegei in order to boost his performance. Due to the selection of the Ethiopian team, Yomif Kajelcha and Selimon Borrego were also not involved in the 5k race. Both of these athletes have incredibly fast 5k personal bests, with Salomon Borrego boasting a 12 minute 43 second personal best and Kanjelcha having a 12 minutes 38 personal best which he set just a few months ago in the Oslo Diamond League. Both of these athletes have very fast kicks meaning they would have been able to adapt well to a tactical race in a way that Cheptegei and Kiblima wouldn't have been able to. I actually picked Salomon Borrego to get the second place medal before he pulled out because he's so versatile as an athlete that he'd be able to do well no matter what happened. If we were to reorganise the start list to include these athletes that weren't in the race and ordered it by personal best, it would go from this to this. Now regardless, I still think Jakob would have won or at least been a strong contender for the gold medal position, but I want to highlight these factors as an important reason as to how he did it so dominantly and comfortably. Now if we combine the lack of really fast runners within the field and the fact that many of the faster runners were recovering from a rapid 10k race, it means the race is most likely going to be tactical. And this is why I predicted that Jakob was going to win this race before it happened. I was betting on the race being tactical and this suits Jakob due to his 1500m speed. Whilst he is an aerobic monster, his experience in the 1500m means he'll be much faster over the last two laps compared to many of the 5 and 10k athletes. For the other runners, the best way to beat Jakob is by setting a fast pace that will remove the sting out of his kick. This was done nicely to 1500m runner Mo Katsir in the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Chapter guy would have known of course that Mo Katsir has a good shot of beating him if it came to a tactical race with an 800m sprint at the end, so he made the pace good and steady so that Katsir wouldn't have had the same speed in the final 400. The hot weather in the Paris Olympics also played a part in this. No one wants to front run in weather that's almost 30 degrees because they're just not going to have the fitness that they normally do. So we've established quite clearly that the circumstances suited Jakob, but that doesn't mean that victory was a given for him. You still have multiple runners who have faster personal best than him, including Hagos Gebrehiwe, who ran the second fastest 5k time in history just a few months ago, also in the Oslo Diamond League. So let's look at the race tactics and see what happened. As expected, the race started off very slow and tactical, with the first kilometre being around 2.49 pace. For reference, if they continued to run this pace, the 5k final time would be 40 minutes 10 seconds. Very fast for the average person, but super slow for these athletes. And in these super slow paces, by elite standards that is, the main thing to worry about is not tripping and falling over. Everyone is munching around you, so it means your heels are going to clip and you're more likely to cause a collision and then fall over. This was especially made worse by the fact that this was a massive field because the tactical races in the heats had caused falls, which meant that additional athletes automatically qualified because they were taken out by circumstances out of their control. So if you've got a higher quantity of athletes competing, it means there's more likely to be collisions. Jakob is of course aware of this, so we see that his tactics are based around just staying out of trouble. In the start of the race, where it's normally the most chaotic as people jostle for position, he stays out quite wide. Yes, he may be running a few extra meters, but at the this pace it doesn't really matter and it means that he stays out of trouble and reduces his chance of an early fall. He does start to tuck in as the positions start to solidify themselves a little bit so we can draft behind the other races and conserve a little bit of energy but essentially we're seeing him do nothing new here but essentially we're seeing him do nothing new here. In the 5000 meters he tends to like to stay in a nice tactical position where he's able to strike if the pace does go a little bit faster but he's still letting the others do the work and dictate the pace for him. Of course unlike the 1500 meters he's not the most aerobically fit athlete out there so it doesn't really make much sense for him to front run. 
Instead, let the others take the headwind and do the work for him, and he can just cruise behind them and hope to kick on them. In the second kilometre, the pace does speed up as 10,000 metre European champion Lobalu starts to keep the pace a little bit more steady. You see him taking over the pacing duties from someone I'm just going to call Thierry because that surname is not something I want to butcher that badly. And Thierry is among the more fit athletes in the 5,000 metres. However, he also ran in the 10k, meaning he's potentially not going to be able to drop his fastest times in this race. Whilst the pace is a bit more steady for the second kilometre, it starts to drop again in the third kilometre. Until finally, this is when two of the Ethiopians, Addison Yuhu, and Bini and Mahari begin to take out a more honest pace and they begin making the pace a little bit more honest kind of relieving the pack for the majority of the race they start alternating between each other a little bit to conserve energy and their goal here is to try and string out the field a little bit and again try and take out the speed of Jakob's legs in the final 800 meters this is the right play in my opinion but it's too little too late whilst the kick of Jakob is strong he's still an aerobic monster with a 12.48 personal best in the 5k and that personal best is both outdated and faster than both of those Ethiopian athletes so whilst the tactics were definitely correct it was the wrong people to do them because there was no one really in that field apart from Gebruet who was going to be able to take out the pace fast enough to really tire Inga Britson. We finally reach the last laps of a race after a 2 minutes 34 fourth kilometer which continues to quicken into the final fifth of the race and this is when the race really kicks off and is the only point where Jakob seems to be in any trouble. It's the 600 meter point and the athletes are starting to jostle for position for the final 400 meters when Hagos Gebruet, the second fastest 5k runner of all time, makes his move. He had sat at the back previously trying to stay out of trouble as well, but he slowly starts to make his way forward before accelerating fast with 600 meters to go. He seemed to want to catch Jakob off guard as much as possible, as he waited until he'd passed Jakob until he really put his foot on the gas. I'm guessing he kind of wanted to stay under the radar and try and avoid Jakob from following him too early, to give him the best possible chance of victory. And with 550 meters to go, we can see here that Jakob is boxing badly. He's got a man in front of him, two men on the side, and two men behind him as well, so there's no obvious route for him to be able to take. Gebru Hewitt has made his move strong and has already put about 5 meters between him and Jakob and the two Ethiopians whilst they are fading are going to act as a nice shield between Jakob and Hagos meaning Jakob will have to work extra hard to get around them even if he is able to fight his way out of that box he's in. However Jakob shows his experience here and is able to wrestle his way out of that field but by this point Gebruet has an 8 meter head start over Inga Britson and now the only question is whether he can maintain it and the answer is yeah no no he can't. Inga Britson starts closing the gap between him and Gebruet very quickly with 250 meters to go Inga Britson has already passed a fading Gebruet with ease and cruises in the last stretch of the race to win in dominant fashion. He doesn't have any challenges by this point, he just widens the gap as long as it goes, and he finishes the race with about a 15 meter lead over everyone else. Given the circumstances of the race at that point, I think it was a smart move by Gebruet, as I'm sure he knew the pace had not been fast enough for Jakob's kick to be removed. So instead of leaving the race to a 400 meter burn up between him and Jakob, he tried to strike unexpectedly when the Norwegian was trapped. Despite Gebruet's aerobic fitness being supremely good, his kick is nothing special, and it may also be that Gebruet peaked a little bit early in Oslo a few months ago. I think if he was fit and confident, he would have tried to take the race out fast and put the hurt on Inga Britson, because ultimately between him and Jakob, he's not going to do well in an 800 meter race. It seems the Ethiopian either didn't have the confidence or didn't have the fitness, which played right into the Jakob's hands, allowing him to take the gold with ease. If you want to see how Kohl Hocker pulled off a huge upset to win the Olympic 1500 meter gold, then click on this video here. Thank you very much for watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy training.